I've got your question sections out, so I'm going to try to keep tabs of this as we go about. So let's see the let's see, first one is let's see when I when I say to from from Tina when I say to a man when he talks a lot on the phone with his ex he talks to his ex daily he says they're just friends but this situation situation makes me feel very uncomfortable and I don't know how to handle it with him without feeling attacked so how should I bring this up okay that's a that's a fair question. If you say as far as how do I how do I bring this up without him feeling attacked, I think what you mean is how do I bring it up without him, you know, reacting really poorly, reacting really horribly. The sort of the sort of status or the standard that I use if you're bringing up something is number one. As much as it might feel like the man's doing something wrong, and in some instances the man is doing something wrong, my hesitation with that is that gets into be somewhat subjective. Some things are right and wrong. You know, you're you're married, you're having an affair, where you, you broke your agreement, that's wrong. You're lying, that's wrong. If you start doing that, that's usually what most of the time people and men react to really strongly with. So I don't know that I would do the you shouldn't and it's so wrong approach because it makes him defensive, which is I think is what you're talking about. Now, with that in mind, I can certainly see your point as far as that making you uncomfortable. The the line that I tell women to use, and I'll I'll go through this, is is where you tell him, you know, when you're talking with Susan, Jennifer, whatever her name is, the ex, I say to say, um, that doesn't make me happy. And that's all you say. Now most of the time a man will look at you and he may go, so if he's in a really bad mood, or he'll go, What? But what I know about men is that if a man's dating you, him making you happy is really important to you, to him. And more so that if he feels like you're unhappy, it bothers men. Now, if it doesn't bother a man at all, then that's probably a different question because that's that's going to come out in other ways. He's going to show up late all the time. He's going to talk harshly to you in public. I mean, there'll be other ways if he just doesn't care at all. But when you say that to him, and you have to you know, bring it up from time to time as the situation comes up, what it does, it starts to eat at them. I've had a number of clients that have done this, so this has been tested at least a fair amount. And it starts to bother a man, and after a while, it eats at him and gnaws at him, and the choice for him ends up being, is it worth it to keep this up? Is it worth it to keep? Because if this was his sister, and you didn't like him talking to his sister, you know, in his mind, you know, he's going to say, you know, it's not worth giving up my sister for this woman, or if it was his mother. But most of the time, if it's next girlfriend or something, you know, the choice being him or you, that's how he begins to decide. This isn't the same thing, I realize, but I've seen the same thing work with a woman who's married, and they just had a small child, and her husband was smoking pot. And if you've ever been around someone or know someone or even if you're one of those that smokes pot, trying to tell them that it's wrong really works bad, I mean, especially now they've changed some of the laws in states here in America. And what she did was the same thing. It's when you smoke pot, it doesn't make me happy. And she had to do that a few times, but that was the response. She didn't argue, and she kept with it. And it took about four months, but I remember the day he came in, and he was like, fine, I'll give up pot. See, he didn't want to. And she wasn't going to convince him that it was a good idea. That that was that was worked terrible, terrible for years. But it wasn't worth living with and being with an unhappy woman because she she didn't whine, she didn't you know scream and holler and stuff. But she kept that up, and it was a form of outlasting him. So I would I would try that, and that'll give you some idea as far as um, him and his motivation. But I found that to be fairly effective with men. So I, I got this one, so let me qualify this one first. This is going to be something I can't answer right away, but I want to give you an idea because there may be some people that listen to this that, that are of the Christian persuasion, and I'm assuming this is serious enough. How can I please God in my marriage and train my children in the fear and teachings of Jesus Christ? Well, probably a little more in-depth than we would typically go here. But let me sort of give you an overview because I don't know that it's that different as far as within a marriage, that it's – you know, if, if you're married, one of the biggest things your husband is going to want is that you respect him. 
And that's, that's not a blank check. And conversely, one of the things a wife is going to want is that her husband loves her. Now, the difference with this is I think a lot of times what we read or see in movies is, is we're not talking about something that, that happens as the result of. You know, I'll respect my husband when he does so many things right, or the husband says, I'll love my wife when she, you know, she's respectful to me and nice. This is something that you make it a point to implement every week. I mean, I would say every moment, but that's unrealistic. And because for a man, being loving to his wife constantly, it's not natural in the sense of that. It's not something he thinks about all the time. A lot, you know, for men, a lot of times, once they enter a marriage, it's kind of like a contract in the sense of I married you, I'm assuming you know that I love you, so now we're a team we're working on a task. And as far as being attentive and loving, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't come as natural to him. So therefore, for him, it's a habit, that at least I'm talking to a husband, be loving to your wife. Do those gestures. Don't wait until you feel like it. Make it a habit that will actually stir up your passions. To a wife, I would say, when, you know, when can you be respectful? When can you point out things that you like? We're not talking about lying or making stuff up. And when both the husband and the wife do those together, it tends to feed off each other. So, and, and in doing so, that's actually one of the best things you could do for children. You know, when children see that mom and dad do that, um, that actually makes them feel really secure about the marriage. It makes them want to understand what it is you believe. They're more susceptible is not the right word, but they're more likely to like what it is because you're not only teaching them certain things, but you're showing it out and you're living it as well. From Stacy, I believe. My husband and I separated, and I'm heartbroken. He will often text me and wants wants to come over for sex. So it is a bad thing while we're separated. I don't want to pressure, so I don't ask. I'm just taking my life one day at a time. Actually, actually I don't think that's Stacy. I think that's Giselle, I think. So is it a bad thing? Well, how about let's talk about, I think what you're asking is, does it help me get what I want? And I'm assuming that, that what you'd like to have is, I want to get back together with my husband. The, the problem with sleeping with him is that from his perspective, that's the way men emotionally connect. It, it's, it's, the, it's the greatest thing for men. And men tend to associate sex with a degree of investment. So let, let's do the two extremes. And, and I know this isn't yours exactly. So a man has sex with a woman after the first date versus a man has sex with a woman after he's, it's the first night that they're married on his wedding night. Same act means two different things. I and mean, it means different things for a woman as well, I realize. But his, what he's invested, not, not just the, the time and effort, but emotionally what he's invested has a strong correlation as to how he views that woman. So while, yes, you're separated, but you're still married, the problem from an emotional standpoint is, is that he's wanting to connect with you without being committed to you or invested with you on the same level. I've actually had, there's one couple I'm thinking of, and they were going through a hard time, and they were starting to ask some tough questions. They were going to take a trip to Vegas. You know, married, not separated. And I said, guys, how, how much you don't sleep together on your trip? And they looked at me, and I, I said, y you do. Emotionally, you're going to get overwhelmed. And, you know, so they they nodded their head, and then they came back two weeks later, and the first thing they said was, yeah, you were right. We slept together. And see, it wasn't a wrong thing, but what it did was it stirred up all those emotions and all the wounds, and it wasn't a way of healing. Not that sex can't be healing with a couple. But what I, my, what I usually tell couples in this situation is, it, it's whoever it is. Usually it's the wife. It's I, I I know that you want to, but right now I'm not sure where we're going. I'm not sure what your intention is. And so as much as I'd like to, part of me is just however you want to say, I'm, I'm just too nervous or I'm too scared to go through with this or, you know, or to, to, to do that with you right now. And again, we're modeling for him, you know, that, for you to give yourself to him, you know, you're, all, you're giving him your heart with that. And so by doing so, that puts you at risk, not horrible risk, but emotional risk, and that's something that isn't going to help your relationship. So, that, so again, I don't know that it's wrong. I just don't know that it's real helpful. 
So let's, I'm scrolling down from, this is from Ivy, I think. How do I inspire him to trust me and commit to me after almost two years of dating? He said he's working on healing some hurts from the past and is not ready to commit. I know there may be several factors because I'm older than him. One thing I realized that he focuses on friends, coworkers, and family members, people he knows that he's known for a long time. Okay, so the, the first thing, and for everyone that's a member of the Women Men Adore Club, you hear me say this all the time. I, I do it on purpose for emphasis. Is in dating, the biggest thing I'm interested in is tension. And, and not that we want to have tension all the time, but what tension does is it helps prevent a man from taking us for granted. So if, now I'm going to generalize this, unless you're 18 years old, it doesn't look like you are, but unless you're 18 years old, then after you've dated someone for about a year, again, I'm, I'm generalizing, there isn't really a whole lot more to discover. I mean, I'm assuming within a year you've had a disagreement or two, you've seen each other on days where your hair is messed up or you're just in a bad mood. I mean, you for the most part, you've probably seen those things. And so when a man is hesitant, that's the first question I want to know is, is I'm, I'm not sure what else you need to discover. What, what, what else is there that you, what, what are you waiting to see? Now, if we've never had a fight, okay, that would be fair you know, to see if we can resolve that. But usually what, what I, I find is a man has been, and you alluded to this, there's been some past hurts, and they want to feel a degree of certainty that they don't want to get hurt again. They don't want to make a mistake again. They don't want to hurt you. And so if if he wants that kind of certainty, then what I what we're really after is is that we can't give him that beyond what you've done. So if he's dated you two years, is he interested? Sure. And but can he trust you the way he wants? Actually, I don't think that exists. And so, you know, how do you inspire him to trust and commit to you? The short answer is it depends on what you're willing to risk. So is this, are you willing to risk what you have right now for the potential of what you want? Meaning, if you start to push it, there might be a chance he says, I can't do this. There might be a chance he says, you know, this is too overwhelming for me. Because if you were dating him 10 years, 20 years, there's a number where you would date him and you would go, this is ridiculous. This, You, know, you have to make a decision. So I don't know if that's two years for you. I don't think it's about making it any more safer for him. I mean, unless there's just something you're doing that he's told you he hates. But most of the time, it's at two years, it's time for him to make a decision. And this can be anywhere from, you know, you can actually have a serious talk with him and say, you know, it, it, it's been two years, and it's not, I don't mean to be pushy or ugly, but I don't really know that there's much more to discover. Or it can be, you know, something where you are just, you know, you make it a point to actually start creating more distance. That's probably something I have to talk with you one-on-one -on -one for. But more than anything else, I would look to get the tension back. And it's not that you want to play games. It's that once you've made it safe for a man, there isn't a whole lot more because that should be enough. I mean, that that's enough for men in general. So then that's not a guy thing. That's a him thing. And his hesitation, when, I, when men that have trouble committing, the ones I've seen in my office, usually with them, what I'm focused on is not tell me the woman you have no doubts with. It's tell me the woman you're afraid to live without. You, know, you have all your doubts, and yet you're more afraid of not having her in your life. Yeah, you can marry her, but I still have doubts. You're going to have doubts. That, that's normal. You've been hurt. But, and it's a greater fear of actually them losing you than it is of being stuck or trapped. So I, that was, I like that. All right, let's see. This one is from, I believe it's Meg. How do I open up and get to know a man without getting too emotionally invested and getting hurt? Well, in fairness, I don't, I don't know that you that you can because without any 
without any risk, just by definition, you're not going to be able to get close to them. But l let me go a step farther with what I, th I think you're asking, or at least the next step of this. I think what you're talking about is how do I, and there's another question that alludes to this as far as, you know, how do I not invest too much too quick, I think. But most of the time I find, especially early on in dating, is that the relationship goes too fast. And part of, you know, going too fast is that you share too much, you give too much, and it's, it's based on the idea that, you know, what our brain does early on in a relationship is it projects. And so we, we see someone smile, we see the man smile, and he's got a really great smile, and our brain says, wow, he's kind. And, you know, the reality is maybe. I mean, he may be kind. He just has a great smile. But since our brain doesn't have all that information, it just fills in the gaps. And it's kind of fun, and it makes us feel good because, wow, he's great looking and he's kind. And, and he, he offers to pay for dinner on the first day. Wow, he's really generous. <laughs> you know, maybe he's generous. You know, so... And then when, when we start sharing and giving, it's based on, a lot of times, false assumptions. And again, it's not that the person's necessarily lied, but that we've you know, given too much too quick. We've opened up too fast. And then once we start to realize some of those assumptions weren't true, then we get hurt. Now, now sometimes men lie. You know, sometimes they're dishonest. That's true. But sometimes that's on us that we went too fast, and mainly because it felt good. And I get it. That Why? Because if I haven't found someone I like in a long time and all of a sudden I meet someone that I do, it's hard to go slow. It, it, it's no fun, especially if I'm a professional woman and I'm educated and there's so many areas that I'm good at, the idea of Bob or whoever telling you to go slow just seems like, nah, I got this. And I've lost count of the number of, I mean, successful lawyers, doctors, whatever you want to count success women, that thought they could just manage their emotions like they can everything else. And you can't. And that's not a put down. That's more to the power of that back part of your brain. That once it's engaged, it tends to sort of take over. So my main emphasis would be if you can go slower early on. Because it's hard once it's gone fast to cool it down. It's possible, but it's just that's a difficult transition to make. Right, but thanks for that. And let's see. Here's a long run, so I'm going to edit some of this from Terrell, I think. I have a man who's 10 years older. He is married very unhappily. He stays because he has a granddaughter. And then she talks about as far as when they get together, how much fun they have, and the key parts. But when he leaves, I feel confused, as if I'm not good enough for him to be fully with him again. I have never man, had a man treat me this way. Please help. Okay, so the first thing is if you're with someone that's married, but I, I can say the same thing if you're with someone that's dating somebody else or if you're with, some, with someone that doesn't want to commit. Now, I'm going to be a little protective of this, is that for, for every woman that I speak with, all the women in the club, all the women that get the newsletter, the idea of sharing, in my opinion, is beneath you. Now, I don't mean to be paternal when I say that, but I mean that to speak with you as a peer. It is is it is beneath you to share. And I get their circumstances, but part of what I think you're feeling is is that, you know, part of you is bonded with him, but I'm hearing you say that that he is in some areas, but he doesn't fall through, that you can't count on it. But when I when he leaves I feel confused. I think the confusion is primarily because you're getting a mixed message. You're having the intimacy, I don't mean just physical, but the emotional intimacy, but there's no follow through with it. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't um, go farther than that. There's a stopping point, and your body and your heart doesn't like that. In fact, it's like ripping something out of it. So I don't doubt the chemistry is really strong. I just don't know how safe he is. And I don't mean safe as in, like, protective, going to harm you. I mean safe as in you can count on him. So please help. See, the, the problem with please help is... I don't know that you're going to like what I would suggest. So if it's 
please help him pick me. You're not saying that, but the problem, but the problem I would have with that is, heaven forbid, his wife is on this webinar, and her question is, how do I get my husband to love me again? And you can see my dilemma. So my biggest thing is, if you're good at putting your heart first, if you see yourself as special, not perfect, it means that we shouldn't have to share. And I'm not saying this is easy. I'm not saying this isn't hard. But if you have to beg, plead, take what you can get, again, I'm not wagging a finger. It's, it doesn't surprise me that it feels like your heart's being torn apart. And that's not to say, told you so, it's to say, I don't know that it's going to get better because it sounds like you're waiting and hoping that things will work out, and maybe they will. I just, I hate to leave stuff to chance. I just, I, I think that's a, that's a tough thing. Not that we can control everything, but I hate to leave it completely up to somebody else. Um, and that, that's my concern with that situation. But, but I do appreciate your candidness with asking it. So let's see, this is Patsy. So my husband and I are working on our, on our marriage from an affair my husband had. It's been, a, it's been a year, but we've come a long ways. I would last, like to ask how I can ask him in a raw <laughs> yet respectful way that I would love to hear him call me baby sweetheart and to send me flowers and surprising gifts. Uh, the part I think is funny about that is is raw yet respectful. So more than anything else, I um, because if that if that's something that you that you need that's important for you, I, I don't know that raw is necessarily the. I, I think that what you mean is like transparent and just completely honest. Is most of the time, men, when they find something that works and you catch them in the act, that's the best way to, to have that happen again. So I saw some research just recently that talked about married couples that do the best, and it, it said of all the ingredients, one of the things they found was is when, you, when your spouse responds to you in a positive and energetic way with something that's important to you. So if your husband, oh, let's do this with you. So if you're if you tell your husband about whatever hobby you're doing or something at work and you got a promotion at work and you say, Oh, I got a promotion, you know, they're gonna pay me a hundred dollars more a week. And your husband says, Yeah, that's great. That's not what they're talking about. But if your husband says, Wow, really hundred dollars a week, tell me more. So you can feel that. He actually seems like he's as excited as you. And it doesn't matter that he's not as excited. How could he? It's not his raise. But that reaction they found actually is one of the best predictors and really helps relationships and marriages get tighter. It's the positive responses. So conversely, if there's stuff when your husband does things, you know, when you see something he likes and you respond in this way, what it does is it actually starts to make him become more dependent upon that. See, there's something about when your wife is proud of you. There's something about when that sparkle in your wife's eye, and I know this goes both ways, but to your question. And when you do that, what I found is, is that he'll begin to get used to that. So if he does something that you like, and instead of doing the, you should do this, this is the correct way, but when he is playful, or when he says something, how do you respond to that? So if if we can if you can indulge me with which may sound a little silly, but if he says something and I get you to whisper in his ear and you say, Oh, that's the spot. Now, you know, he'll he'll wince a little bit, he won't count, and you're flirting with him, absolutely. And he may not even know what that was. Maybe it was he opened the door for for you, maybe it was he flirted with you, maybe he liked something, but it's that playful response with him. See, it's not telling him to do it. But it's the same stuff that every one of you ladies did when you were dating and you're still dating, that, that you knew early on and that you know you don't dare leave it up to a man early on in dating. I mean, nothing would happen. And that's not a put down of men. It's just women know this. I've gone to conferences and spoken, and I say this, and, and women just laugh because they know. So I, I would catch him in the act. I would... Whatever way he likes, if it's a look you give, it's whisper in his ear, if it's if he's into touch, touch his elbow wherever he likes to be touched. And what we're trying to do is create an anchor. 
And what that anchor does is that is that it makes him like that feeling, and then in his mind, it's how do I get that feeling in? And then as you build on that, then when he, once he does, you know, you, you, he may ask you at times, or when he does it, he says something, you respond to that, and men tend to go, oh, that works? And then, then with other things, they go, oh, that didn't work. But men really think that simply when it comes to relationships. You know, a lot of times for men, we just want the cheat sheet, to be honest, just you know, the, the cheat sheet. A lot of times women give us more credit, really, than, than men have, which I appreciate, but... Um, they, they just, they're just they a lot more bewildered, I think, than sometimes women realize. But good question. So let's go to, let's see who's next. Actually, I'm going to skip over to some of the questions that you guys, I can tell I haven't done this in a while. So many questions, so many questions. So I'm having, this is from Jenny, I'm having trust issues, but it's for a reason. It seems to be hurting our relationship. I feel he wants to work on it, but it feels like the process is slow, and it feels like he feels I am more of the cause to his process. You, know, in, in fairness to everyone that asks questions, I know sometimes it's, it's tough because you're writing as fast as you can, and sometimes the words don't come out right. So I think what you're asking, Jenny, is, is that he wants to work on it, but it feels like the process is slow, I'm assuming, for both of you. And it feels like that you're more of the cause of this process. So if there's trust issues with a couple, be it an affair, whatever the thing is, and I've got someone in my office, or, or if it's just, just a woman, I'm asking whoever's having trouble or both. I go, first off, what gesture can your partner do that would let you know they're trying? What, not, 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 not to fix it. No, no, let's don't do that right now. What, what, what is it? And so, and I'm one on one. I'm, I want to know for, for her, for him. What, what is it she can do to let you know she's trying? You know, do you need her to say something? Do you need her to say, you know, I understand you're mad. You know, do you need her to paraphrase what you're saying? Do you need her to say she's sorry? Now, not, not sorry for something she didn't do, but do you need her to say, you know, I'm sorry if I get really busy to always listen. You know, what, what do you need her to do that she can do right now, not for the next 20 years, but right this second? And for her, what gesture can he, can he do for you? Do you need him to hold your hand right now, put his arm around you, sit there and listen? Because when you can see them doing the gesture and it's something you've picked, that gives you something to have faith or hope on. It doesn't fix every problem. But really with trust, what we're first trying to establish is is the person interested or trying? You know, do they care? They may not get it right, and that's what we're trying to separate. Because if it's just about if they don't get it right, they don't care. Well, then that that's discouraging, and they just quit like, trying after a while. So then we're after. So so what what can they do? What gesture can they do that that I give them? And then when I see that, that actually helps with trust, because then they have a cheat sheet. They have something they can pull from. I mean, I've seen husbands do this. The wife was just flustered, and he looked at me, and, you know, I, I didn't want to laugh because I can tell he was flustered. And I said, remember, she, she gave you a cheat sheet. Oh, I mean, right here? Yeah, right here, right here. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. so he goes over and sits, you know, I usually have him sit across from each other, sits on the couch, and he just holds her hand, just sits there, because that's what she said helped. That, that's not answering all of her questions, and that's, but that makes it safe. It makes her feel she's not alone. You know, and I've, I've done it you know, both ways, depending on who was stuck. So that, that's usually the starting place I would start. It's, it's what gesture. Each of you can come up with one. And now with that gesture, though, remember, if the person does it, you have to be willing to yield to that gesture. You, you can't do the, I think your motives are horrible, you don't really mean it. Um, I mean, that'll just stop it. If your agreement is if, if you do this gesture, that's why you have to pick it. And I see it, I will lay down my weapons, I will lay down my guard, and I will give you the benefit of the doubt that you are at least trying, that you are interested, even though I may not you know, see it, even though, you know, so, but uh, that, that I will do that. Okay, let's do another one from our list. Okay, so um, I'm dying to know if you think 30 days, no contact works during a breakup. Yeah, it, it depends on the circumstances. So 
if you've gone through the how do I get him back program, there's a part of that that's in there. But there's some instances, like if there's been a, a fight and and it's something that's you know it's resolvable, but it's more of a pride issue. You know, he he raised his voice, we raised our voice. I'm not going to. You know, if there's something we can do to just fix it, if there's something that you know you did wrong, just apologize. Just, just I, I'm not I'm not saying it's fair, but I don't mean apologize for something you didn't do. But if it's a pride thing, and someone says, well. You know, I'm just, I'm not going to. Okay, if if, if the relationship's not worth it, that's fair. But see, those are there are those those instances that I wouldn't say it's worth it. Most of the time, the reason for no contact, why myself, really anyone else that has one of these get him back programs, one of the things that 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 I've discovered as I'm working with folks is is that men need time to cool down. Men, it takes men longer to go from th- from feeling to thinking and feeling and thinking to feeling. Well, we don't do it as simultaneously or as fast as women do. And so that period for for a man, what I'm trying to do is to get him to calm down. Whether he's angry or hurt or scared or whatever he is, I'm actually not trying to resolve it during that time because his emotions are actually getting in the way. So I, I don't know that I would just leave it at at, at 30 days. But I want him to cool down, and that's why any woman here that's been through that program, I, you know, I know when I get the emails, it's been a week, what should I do? It's not that, that I or the staff is blowing you off of, <laughs> it's, you know, you, there's, don't do anything. It's that there's a reason for there's a strategy behind it, is that I want you to have the best chance possible to get back with him. If you tell me this is who I want, okay, then that's my goal. But we, you know, we if we have like a shot at this, is that I want to give you the best chance possible. And you could say the perfect thing or have the perfect insight, but if you say it at the wrong time, then it doesn't matter how great the insight is. He can't hear you. So long answer to your question, but 30 days in general, it can be depending on the circumstances. So let's go back to the ones that were sent in. Right, here's one from Jill, I think. Why doesn't any of the relationship advice I read ever apply to men over 50, particularly divorced ones and ones that have had bad experiences? The short answer to that is most relationship advice, at least that I give regarding men, is fairly applicable to any age. Now, there may be exceptions to that, but in in general, um, in, in general, when folks date in a relationship, this is sort of an unofficial thing, I'll tell you. Everyone goes back to about 12 years old. I've, I've had clients, you know, 45, 50, 55, 60, they're a widow, they get a divorce, they start dating again, and they act like they're 12. I don't, I don't mean like, you know, 12 is in you know, goofy, bizarre, but they have the same insecurities, that they, they ask the same questions a 12 and 13 year old, you know, what if he likes me, gosh, did I make a mistake? And they get hyper conscious about everything. You know, I, I said this, do you think it was horrible and stuff? You know, ways that they would never, you know, do just a normal conversation. And it's because of the risk factor. You know, I like them and I'm wondering if they like me. So, There are some things with men over 50, just, you know, over 50, they're probably not going to want children um, as as far as having more children. Um, Over 50, they're probably at a different place in their career. But there's, and there there may be something particular you're, you're focusing on, but the main reason I don't is I don't see a huge difference with men over 50 as far as what they're looking for. Yeah, again, the only you know the difference has to do with children primarily. If a man's you know 35 to 45 or 35 to 40 or somewhere in there, he's probably thinking in terms of children. But that's really the main difference that I see. So so that that's usually why. Okay, so let's I'm scrolling down to the next one, which is. So I'm going to go to one that you guys have asked here. So my husband and I are in the 
process of divorce. He moved out with another woman after 10 years of marriage. Told me I disrespected him and he doesn't love another woman. He's in this affair for three years now. I feel when I speak with him that he has confused me while I still have enough feelings for him. Divorce is headed. Do you think there might be a chance for reconciliation after divorce? You know, there's. I've seen that happen before. It's it's rare, and most of the time when there's a, there's a separation involved, and a woman comes to me and says, "I don't want this divorce." The main thing I'm trying to focus on is I want that man to feel what it's like to actually have the divorce before it happens as much as we make that happen. Because what I've I've seen is I've, I've seen men, you know, they're all gun-ho, they were dating a woman and they were separated and the woman was just so sure and the guy was so sure and then all of a sudden the divorce happened even though the guy said he wanted the divorce and all of a sudden he gets cold feet. And all of a sudden he gets overwhelmed, and it's because all of a sudden then the reality hits him. See, before when he was dating this woman while he was still married, there was a built-in buffer. And that buffer enabled him to you know, pour his heart out to her, be loving to her. And then all of a sudden once that buffer was gone, see, now there's no reason for him not to progress with her. And now it just became real. So I've seen what happens to men once they do get divorced. So is there... Is there a chance there is one? And, and here's the other tough thing as far as chances go. Most of the time when women ask me that, it's sort of a over under 50%. You know, is it like or not likely? So is it likely? Probably not. The reason I don't tell someone it can't happen is because for those situations that, you know, that it's like three out of 100, you know, it's probably not going to happen. For those three people it did happen, I'm really glad I didn't tell them it couldn't happen for them. Now, I don't know which of those three are going to be the exception. So as much as I can, I try to be honest and say, I don't know how likely it is, but if you want to try, I'll be glad to try with you, and I'll give it all that I can. But is it, you know, is it, is it risky? Yes. Is it likely? Probably not. But I've had enough of those exceptions that that's sort of my bias as to, as to why that I don't. You know, do that. And just tell someone it's a waste of time. It's for those that have actually worked out. You know, I'm I'm glad I didn't do that. All right. So so let's go back to the other ones. I'm dating a man who finished a divorce in July, but he seems to still have anger towards his ex and is stressed with the child support obligations. A little time with his son. Is there a recommended period of time to wait before having a ser before a serious relationship can develop? My aunt says a year after the ink is dry. <laughs> That's funny. We have a nice connection, get along well, share the same values and goals, but the timing may be off. Yes, actually, that, that's a good question, especially with children, is that a lot of times men are divorced with children. It depends on the age of them. But um, there can be a lot of guilt that's associated with that because of what the, you know, they feel bad for the child, you know, because the child didn't ask for the divorce, the child's the recipient of it. Financially, that's a big stressor as well. Yeah, I, I think what your what your aunt's alluding to, sort of as a rule of thumb, is is it's giving the person time to get acc acclimated toward it. You know, that it, it's a new way of doing things. It's it's a new level of responsibility. If if it's about you're saying, you know, I don't know how much longer I can wait. Well, that, well, that that's fair. And you know, part of having the serious talk is has to do with what he's doing. I mean, does he want you to his own? Is is this something where he wants just to – he likes seeing you every now and then, that he said, I can't commit to anyone right now? Is it, um, you know, is it something that he, you know, wants to keep you at a certain distance but doesn't want to get any closer? Or has he been really clear, you know, and says, this isn't something I can do? Um, right now. So some of it's him. If, if it's he's giving you mixed messages, that's the time I would have a talk. You know, there's no one but you. I can't be without you, but I've got these obligations. Well, that's, I'm not saying it's easy for him, but in fairness to you, that would be a mixed message. If he's not sure, if he's hesitant, that probably is a time thing. And, and I don't usually do things as far as a specific time. What I ask women is, are you done? 
you know, or t tell me if you're done. If you tell me you're done, fair enough. But if you're not done, if, if this is something you still want to pursue, then the reason I would have someone stick with it is I'm more worried about six months, a year down the road, you looking back and going, oh, if I just waited, if I just, I'm worried about regrets. So I'd rather someone stick with it longer and not have any regrets, even though it might seem tedious than to try to get out of something because they should, I mean, unless it's something wrong, get out of something and then look backwards and, and say, oh, if I'd have just waited a little bit. So, so that's, that's sort of my rule of thumb bias. All right, so our next one is from, oops, no name. It's been bothering me that this guy I really like has a successful career on Wall Street and handsome, good-looking. I recently told him how I feel about him after we slept together. He stopped talking to me. He seems to enjoy the sex, but not saying anything about the relationship. He also mentioned his parents. Parents have been pressuring him to get married. What worries me is that I'm only two years younger than him. I'm scared to tell him my real age. He's 37, and he thought I'm in my late 20s. I wonder what to do to start a relationship with him. Well, the, as far as the age goes, if you lied to him, he's going to be mad. And I'm, I'd, I'd love to tell you otherwise, but um, he's going to be mad. So, so honestly, I don't know that I would say this to you, but in general, I would tell someone sooner because the problem is the longer it goes on, the more it's built on an assumption. Even though I don't doubt you look like you're in your 20s. I mean, for the sake of argument, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. As far as how do I get him, this goes back to how much you're willing to risk. So for women in general, getting sex is not a problem. I mean, I mean, women in general tend to think in terms of I can have sex when I want it. I know that's a generalization. But that's why the reason I'm saying this is because with the recent Ashley Madison scandal and all those you know, accounts opened and dating sites and all this have known this for years, is that oftentimes there is a lot, they charge men a lot more than they do women because it's, it's harder, harder to get women into a casual sex site because women don't view that as valuable as a commodity as men do. Conversely now, when a woman wants the relationship to go with it, that's when things start to level out because men in general tend to not think that's as difficult, that that's something that they don't have to pursue as hard that a woman would be more interested in that. So right now in your situation, you're telling me he gets, to, he's having or had one of the things he wants and Conversely, you're not having it. So if you start to change the rules, is he going to like it? No, he's not going to like it. Because remember, men don't bond with sex. That they, they just don't. Women do, but men don't. Men can compartmentalize in a way that women can't. So how to do it goes back to how much you're willing to risk. All right, so um, I just have a message that I faded out that we can't hear you. Can someone type if they can hear me? just to make sure it's not everyone, as in, okay, thank you. So how much you're willing to risk? If you're saying to me, I think this could be special, I'm willing to risk what I have now for what I want, then it would be some time to talk of, and this is what I tell women to say, I say over sober dinner or something, you say, I have an apology that I have to say, um, you know, I thought I was cool and I could, I was okay with this, but you know, if I keep sleeping with you, I'm going to think about marriage, babies, forever. You know, you say something kind of um, stereotypical, and I don't. And, you know, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to start getting weird. I'm, and I am not going to be that type of woman. I am not. I am not going to turn to that woman that's calling all that kind of stuff. So honestly, I'm sorry, but I can't keep sleeping with you. And you know, initially you're going to get a look on his face like what? Or it's a game or something like that, or maybe he'll play along. And the trick is you have to outlast him with this. Maybe he gets mad and says, I'm not interested in that. Okay. And see, if that's the case, I'd rather you find out now. If what he wants is just casual and not expensive, then the sooner you find this out, the better. If there, there are some men in some of the stages of their life, all they're interested in casual. We do not want to try to convert them. 
it, it, as, as much as I, I can say you can influence the men a lot, there are some men at certain stages we don't want to try to convert because they're not interested in being converted. You know, being converted, we have to have someone's permission to some degree. And so there are some men that it's, if it's that and he goes away, that's easy for me to say good riddance, I realize. But I would rather you find this out now than six months. If he sticks around, if he laughs or rolls his eyes some, I don't care if he does that, even if he gets mad, if he still follows up with you, then now we're starting to demonstrating that for him that there's more to you're not just someone fun to have sex with. You're not just a sex buddy. And during, and, and then at least that's the way I would do it initially. There's, there's probably more of a strategy that goes more in depth, but that's how I would do it. And what this is what I call the girl card. And that's that's not to be disrespectful to ladies by saying girl, but I mean girl as in like 14 years old, 12. The girl card is something that men, they may want, may want to argue with, but they can't. And so we blame it on that. It's, you know, I, I would like to do this, but, you know, and that's you know, that's what girls do. That, that's what a, a woman does. If I sleep with you, I'm going to start doing this. And he can argue, but you can fall back on that. It's just, no, that, I, trust me, that, that is what we do. And I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to do your worst fears at all. So a tough question, but I appreciate you asking him. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to the most recent ones. I, I'm interested romantically in my best male friend. He said I'm not his type and he's not attracted to me. Same day he begins to change his actions toward me, touching me more often, more attentive, more thoughtful, very confusing. You say to pay attention to actions and words. I do. That's very good that you did. Would it apply here? Yes, it would. So in fairness to you, yeah, if, if he says he's not interested, you're right. If if that would be the case, the thing that makes me curious is women are like this, but men are especially like this. When a man's not interested in a woman, we really go out of our way not to get in awkward situations. What we, I mean, we we don't encourage, we don't flirt it, because that just feels yuck to a man because it feels awkward. It, it it just feels, you know, she likes me, but I don't like her. I don't want to hurt her feelings and stuff. And men cringe at that. I mean, there's, I mean, there's a reason going back to high school days that you know men, I think it was called the Sadie Hawkins dance. Where women would ask men, men don't like that's awkward for men. Men just think that's that's just the worst thing in the world to have to say no to someone, you know, because you don't want to hurt their feelings. And so. Because of that, if a man is encouraging being playful or flirtatious, there's something there. And I don't know what it is, and I don't know about the guy's issues. But is there something there? Sure, there's something there. What I don't know is what he's confused about. See, I, I don't know if this is he's confused with you or if there's something confused about him. Because, see, this isn't a guy thing. You're right. Men don't encourage like that. If this is my client, he tells me this, and somehow it slips out that he's, you know, starts sitting next to you and your shoulders are touching and flirtatious, then I say, hey, what's that? What? Yeah, this, this is the one you're not interested in, right? But you're having a coffee with this afternoon? Mm -hmm. And see, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me what he says. It, it doesn't matter if he denies it. What he did means more to me than any excuse he's going to offer me. Now, maybe he's not ready to admit it. So as far as that's what I think, what would I do? Actually, I would maintain the distance with it because going by what he said, you pulling back, you being distant, I know no one likes to play games. I, 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 I know that. But the game has to do with the person. The game is simply because it's not the right time for him. And so pulling back, going about your business, that actually is going to make you more appealing because what we're waiting for is for him to not – hint like he's doing and him to actually take a step and the fact that you don't you're not that easy in the sense of you're not just a comedy you're not just taking any crumb that he gives you that's what I found is the best chance to flip that switch to actually help him make up his mind because he's confused about something I don't know what his hesitation is but you're right I'm glad you applied that and I, absolutely that's exactly how that applies between what he thinks and what he says that's a good one So let's let me do one more, and, um, and even me trying to go through these quickly, um, 
I'm not going to get to all these. I'm sorry. So let's go back to. Okay, been, been dating a guy for about eight months. In the beginning, we were great, kind of good, too good to be great. Um, I called him, so we went back and forth. Before we got off the phone, he said something just didn't feel right. But that he's out of town, we'll call back. I'm not sure how do I get him back, how to get him to the point where he was in the beginning. Please help. Probably more than I can do in the webinar with that, but let's let's go over just some sort of basics with this. So, if if a man is you know says he connects with you, he has a good time, everything's going well, but then he pulls away, that's not a guy thing. That's a him thing. That, that that's not even though I know a lot of men do that. That's not something that sort of men in general. The reason he does it at least where I would look with him is if he was a client is, okay, I don't know where you got hurt in the past because there's an oversensitivity to something. And the problem if someone's oversensitive is it's almost impossible not to offend them. I mean, it, it's see, the sensitivity is designed to protect them. And the problem with that is it protects them, but it keeps people at a distance. And so women, and, and women can do this too, so not just men, but women get a mixed message. You know, he, you know, he says that bothered me or something. Okay, I won't do that. But then if she, the only way to not do that is for her to become boring and to not tease, to not joke, you know, not be playful, not do anything. And because it's a, what I call a disproportionate reaction. So I'm sure there's something you did. A lot of times he won't tell you. That's the other part of it is that it's not just that you're punished for what you did, it's you have to guess on top of that. So whenever a man does this, and I, I tell you this not that I'm proud of it, but I am more of a sulker than a yeller. I'm, I'm just, I didn't grow up yelling, but I'm more likely to get quiet. So I get men that sulk. I so get it. And because of that, I know what to do with them. When a man's distance like this, I absolutely know that what they hate is to be ignored. Now, that's easier for me since I'm not the one that likes them. So I, much easier for me to ignore them than it is to tell you. But I know with them is that when they act poorly and you ignore poor behavior, is that most of the time they do come back once they've calmed down, and that's the time to address it. That's the time to bring it up. And that's the time, and we're not trying to understand everything as much as you like, but this is where we want to be really clear and short with them, because it is a, usually it's an injury area, and we're saying, you know, when you just stop talking at me, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that at all. And that may not sound like a lot, what I just told you right there, but that's what I'll do with men. I'll do this in front of their girlfriends, in front of their wives, and I'll say, you know, when you do that, you know, she doesn't like that. Because... I know that for him to have someone talk to him that way, there's a limited opening I've got or any woman has to do this. So I'm not, this isn't something about, you know, I'm trying to get it all out. I'm trying to like it like a shot. I'm trying to make an injection, and I want him to feel it. If I flood him, he's just going to tune me out. It's too much. That's the way not to be heard. So if he's distancing, that's what I would do is wait. And as far as um, how do I get him back, you know, the, the short answer to that is is that's I probably have to talk to you one on one. Uh, I, I just there is no paddle with that. I wish there was. It's not that I have it and won't give it to you. I just I, I just I need to know a lot more details. And and the last thing you said was how do I get him to the point of the beginning? Actually, I don't know that you want it in the beginning for this reason. Remember we said is that early on in the relationship, it's everything's, a lot of it's based on projections. He smiles, she smiles, they're wonderful, they're perfect. And in the beginning, it's based on a lot of false things. So I know we'd like to get it back like that. Actually, you don't want that. You want the relationship to progress, to go from being adrenaline-based to endorphin-based. You actually want those difficulties. I think what you're saying is how can we get back where we really cherish and love each other? And actually... So it's not so much going back as much as it's how you resolve these things. And the other thing is, is he willing? See, this this is, I hate to say this, but it's true. If if this is the way he's going to be, if he's going to overreact, and he's not going to give you something clear and measurable not to do, 
like, you know, if you scream at me, that doesn't work for me. I, I stop talking. Okay, that's pretty clear. You, know, you have to decide if it's worth screaming at him. But if it's just he does it with stuff that you're scratching your head, then that's going to be for him to, to decide, you know, that doesn't work well with women. If that's what you're going to do, that's not only not going to work with you, it's not going to work for her to any woman. And then decide, is he worth it? You know, is, is he worth the effort? Maybe he is. But if he doesn't see what he's doing, then our question is, how long do you want to give him to see it? And um, that's, I know that's not an easy answer. I would, I would give it to you, but it's, it's a tedious process with a man that's a sulker who doesn't want to see it. And this is coming from a man that's a sulker that does want to see it, and it's still not easy. Okay, so we're over time-wise, but let's see if we can do one more question. And let's see. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Let's see which one. Um, Okay, so, uh, this is from Maria. My new boyfriend likes to likes to text message, and when he's on the phone, he talks a lot. While I'm not into text messaging, I prefer shorter phone calls too long. It's boring. I'm afraid he gets offended if I bring bring out this subject. Thank you very much. So whether this is about text messaging or whether this is about really anything of your preference, it's you know if, if someone's offended, most of the time that they're offended because it's a it's you know, you're telling me this is right or wrong. I mean, you may not use those words. You know, it, it's a moral judgment. And now there are I'm not saying there are no moral judgments. There are certain things that are black and white, some things that are right and wrong. But once you do the right or wrong, you know, how dare you um you know just how rude of you I mean once you start doing the looking down on someone you have to be careful because if they don't share that with you, you've lost your leverage. I'm not saying you're doing this. So if it's a if you prefer for shorter phone calls, then you know some of this is for you and him. I mean, one is if it's a deal break. I don't know if it is. That's something to consider. Is he going to be offended? He might get offended, but a lot of times I think it's how you do it. And so if you're, and you may have to do this repeatedly, because if, if this is his way of connecting, you know, over dinner or sometime, you said to him, and remember, a lot of the key is your tone and how you do this, is you say, sweetie, you know I love the sound of your voice. You, you pick something that you like. You know I love the sound of your voice. You know, you know, I shouldn't tell you this, but once I hear the sound of your voice, I'm, it makes me nervous at times. I'm afraid you're going to ask me something that I just won't be able to say no to. So, so don't you dare misuse this. I'm telling you that right now. So you know I dig the sound of your voice. But sometimes if we talk too long on the phone, you know, it just, um, I, I may get tired or it may just wear me out or something. So, you know, if I want to end the phone call shorter, it may be that I got something else to do. It's not you. So, you know, if I hang up, I'm going to ask you to give me the benefit of the doubt or if I say I got to go. You know, that um, I know I may not talk as long as you want, but, you know, sometimes it just isn't me. Now, if you really want to turn it up a notch, depends on how how much hooks for you got, is you can say, um, you know, it's just not the same not hearing your voice in person. Because, you know, when I hear your voice in person, I get to see your eyes and, you know, your eyes, wow. And then I start thinking about your eyes and it just kind of makes me frustrated. So I like talking to you on the phone. It's just not the same as not seeing your eyes. And see, you see how I make it playful. I'm I'm being firm, and I'm not making it a right or wrong, because I like the idea of turning conversations or turning things that concern you and looking for a way to flirt. Now it has to have some truth to it, but it doesn't have to be you know something you think all the time. I mean, I made that up off the top of my head, but I promise you, a man if he heard that. He'd start grinning, and now all of a sudden it wouldn't be about we got to talk on the phone. Even if he thinks you're making it up, it won't matter. It will not matter. He may laugh or something like that. See, it doesn't matter to you if a man is playful with you. You like it, even if you know he's exaggerating. Even if he's making stuff, you still love the attention, and so will he. 
So that, that's what I would do. All right, so thank you so much once again. This was just sort of a quick, haven't talked to you in a while, follow up with you, and we'll um, have our questions a little more organized next time, and we will get this edited to you, and thank you so much. I've enjoyed this one and all, and we'll let you know when the next one is going to be scheduled. If you got any questions or comments, if you got feedback about this, if you'll email us just at the women. Men adore, women Adore Club at Gmail, the typical one, and our assistants will go over that. Uh, maybe something you liked, uh, something you didn't like, because uh, we're really trying to customize this for you. But thank you again, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and it was lovely spending time with you again. Take care.